Welcome. It's very good to have you all here. This is our first office hour, so I'm so happy to see faces. Um, this training is being recorded, but as it looks like we're a smallish group right now, so please feel free to interrupt if you have questions or you know things you want clarification on, let us know. Live transcription is available, so I'm um, Julie has turned that on for us, I'm sure, so um, you'll be able to access that. And the link for all of our recordings prior, as well as moving forward, is now at this link here on the slide. This is a new link, so if you have another one, um, get rid of it, because this has been updated. Our website has been changed. So we are here to talk about resources. And last year was the first time we decided to do resources. And it was in direct response in my own head to what we're going through right now, which was this, this monitoring and, and audit process, right? As part of the process, I know being on this end that we had so many resources thrown at us. Try this document, try that document, use this, use that. And I personally was very overwhelmed at the amount of um, documents and checklists and sheets and whatnot that were given to us that I thought, you know what, we throw so much at the field. I wonder if we're doing the same thing. Are we overwhelming the field with too many resources in an attempt to be helpful? So this office hour, that's what this is intended to do is just kind of give you some highlights sort of a top level view of what we offer. Um, and we're just gonna sort of focus on a couple of them, but we just want you to know what we have available. So this is our team. We are small, but we are mighty. I am so exceptionally proud to work with these people. My name is Colette Sullivan. I'm the Federal Programs Coordinator. And for those of you who have not met me before, I was a special education teacher for 30 years before I joined the department in 2018. I worked primarily with uh, students with autism. That was my that was my favorite place to be. Um, and Jennifer is here with us today. So Jennifer, you want to come on and introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Jennifer Gleason. Um, before I joined this amazing team about three and a half years ago, um, I was a special education teacher. And before that, while I was going to school, I was an ed tech in Colette's classroom. And Julie. Hi, I'm Julie Pelletier. I'm the admin support for the monitoring team. Um, I am in my seventh year at the DOE. And before that, I was an admin support at a K-5 elementary school for 16 years. Great, thank you. And Carly and Ashley are the other two members of our team. They are doing another training um, for an SAU today. So we are splitting our time today. So one of the things we wanted to really highlight for you is from cohort to cohort, there might be changes that we make. We like to alert the field to these changes so that you are never um, surprised when you come back up for cohort what we might be looking at. I'm not gonna read through these, but if you look on the left-hand side, those are just the codes. Those are our internal codes. Those are what you might find on your corrective action plan if you, you, know, if you were in cohort. And you can see right next to each one of those codes what it stands for. This list shows all of the findings that were removed as part of our review in the 24-25 cohort. And that is just because of, um, what the data represented. It's also due to in, um, increased TA from our federal providers, just helping us better understand the system and making sure that we're really only looking at what we have to look at as it relates to IDEA, making sure that we're not looking too deep. So these changes were made, but when we took some off, we had to, we found that there were some that we needed to add so again, I'm not going to read these to you, but it's the same setup, the codes on the left, and then you can see what those codes represent. Um, so those were added with the 2425 cohort. So if anybody on this call is in 2425 cohort, we have added these to, to that process. 
as part of this work, we are really looking very hard at the difference in compliance versus best practice. And we are going around and around about this as a team. Our team is tasked with compliance, right? So if we come in and we're reviewing your IEPs, we are looking to make sure that all the, all the components on your IEP meet compliance. That's also, um, that's what we're tasked with. That's what our job is. We also, we also do a lot of professional development as evidenced by this office hour. And that's really what we love to do. However, anything on your cap is a compliance item. And it is come, it comes right out of the federal regulations. It comes right out of IDEA. Best practice, however, that's what we want for all students. And that really equals best programming. And when we do training, when we do any professional development, what we're going to talk to you about is best practice. So just understand it's a slight nuance but we just wanted you to understand the difference. We have to do compliance. We want to do best practice. And that's really important because best practice is a higher standard. And if you are unfortunate enough to find yourself in a due process situation, best practice is really what tells the better story of the student. It's really what articulates programming for the student in a much better way. So we have an example here, just to, to sort of, again, just articulate this a little bit more clearly. Compliance, if we were coming in to look at this piece around compliance, that would include documenting in a written notice if a parent chose to waive their right to that seven day notice to implement the IEP, all right? That would be compliant. However, best practice would be to incorporate that into the written notice and complete the optional form. Because the optional form is in fact optional, and it has nothing to do with the compliance end, we would never look to see that. But a due process officer might, I'm not saying they would, but that could come into play. Both are correct, but again, just really remember that we are only looking for compliance, but best practice is, is that better programming for your students. So we just like to lay that out for you because that's sort of the lens that we're gonna look at everything through today. Our website has gone through quite a bit of changes and it is still very much in flux. However, this link will take you to our special services and inclusive education website. And it has these links here that I've included on this slide. So child development services, our supervision, monitoring and support, dispute resolution, special projects, IDEA data, and then funding. What we're gonna talk about today obviously is the, the supervision, monitoring, and support piece, because that's our that's our role, right? That's our lane. So that that page will take you to this resources page. And the website itself is broken up by those resources. So those resources are all chunked together. And then laws and regulations are sort of separate. So depending on which direction you're going in, that's how those are organized on the website itself. And this is what our resources look like. And it is very overwhelming. Um, we, you can look at how many entries you want to you view at any one time. You can click to sort by category. But I just wanted you to get a visual sense of what this looks like. And we're going to talk very specifically about some of these today. So there's there's just those those are just the three pages. So laws and regulations are uh, is procedural manual and and muser right. These are the areas that we're going to focus on today. So laws and regulation include those two components. We're going to talk about our quick reference checklists. And if you look on the resources, those are we're going to talk about the IEP and the eligibility form. Information sheets incorporates all of those that are listed here. We are not going to look at all of those. We don't have time, um, but we're just going to talk about a couple. Again, just so you can get a sense of what, what is included in those information sheets. And then we just have a slide around alternate standards that we wanted to share with you very quickly. All right. So the procedural manual, this is a document that was created by the IEP committee some years ago. 
And if you do not have it, it is a phenomenal document. I wish I could take some credit for, have, for the creation of it. I wasn't part of it, but it really outlines everything you need. There's the table of contents. Thank you, Jennifer. It really outlines everything you need in preparation for developing programming for your student. It talks about the documents, it talks about the paperwork, it includes timelines, and includes specific eligibility forms. So if you do not have this as a resource downloaded, it is a great one for you to, to have. Quite often, um, if there are questions, you know, even if I have a question, this is this is generally the first place I will check because there, there's just so much information in here. And that is the link. I wanted to keep the links. I was going to embed them on the slides. Then I had them on a separate sheet and I just decided, you know what? We'll talk about it and there's the link. So that will take you directly to the procedural manual if you don't already have it. Maine Unified Special Education Regulations fondly, and I say fondly tongue in cheek, referred to as MUSER. These are the regulations and these, there were some changes made to these in 2024, but this is still in the process of being rewritten. This is a massive document. It is, I, I can't even remember now, it is 300 plus pages and it is not an easy document to manipulate around in. However, it is a very important document because it really talks about all of the regulatory expectations, both main, main specific as well as IDEA. So it is a document that um, you will see us reference, and it is an important one for you to just be aware of. It is, um, like I said, it is quite massive. And the next slide, I think, just shows you what I'm talking about. It, there is so much information. There is a find option if you are in Muser Online where you can search for specific information. The challenge with this is it is so particular about the keyword that you need to use to find information. So even trying to uh, use that find option, it, it can still make it very, very challenging. We wanted you to be aware of it. However, if you have questions specific to regulations, feel free to reach out to any of us and we'll be happy to guide you through Muser itself. And there's the link for that. All right, these next couple of quick reference documents I am so excited about. If you um, worked with us at all last year, we had an IEP quick reference document, but it was a very separate document. This year, we decided to put it right on the IEP itself, and I am so proud of it. Um, you know, that one of the members of our team worked, Carly, worked very, very hard on this. And what this is intended to do, if you look at the top, it will say, you know, you can see that compliance versus best practice. All of the items that are compliance items, that remember, those are all of the items that would potentially show up on your corrective action. Those are documented in red. Best practice, which again is that better programming for students, that is all documented in blue. This gets amended every year so that it aligns very closely with our cohort expectations. And you will see again the code. You don't need to learn the codes, you don't need to worry about them, but just so you see how they align back to your corrective action. And then it will tell you under each code exactly what it is and exactly what compliance or best practice will mean. So Jennifer, uh, Jennifer, could you just go back to the first page of the IEP for me, please? Thank you so much. So an example here, FOT7, that's the code around making sure that the IEP was sent to parents within 21 school days of the annual date. That's that compliance piece. There's a little checkbox there. So as you're generating an IEP, it, my guidance would be, if you find this useful, to have this with you so that you are going through each one of these compliance items as you're generating your IEP to make sure that it aligns directly back to what we will be looking for. So FOT8, that talks about date of next annual, making sure that that is within 364 days of the annual. Remember, red is compliant. So that's these are the items that we would look at specifically if we came on site. 
Let's see if we can find one that has some. Those are all compliance items again. And here's some blue items, right? Those are the best practice. So you can see present level. Best practice would be to make sure that your present level is baseline data for the goal that immediately follows it, okay? And also arranging, uh, avoiding a range. So you wouldn't want to say 60 to 70%. You wouldn't want to say that the students sometimes or often or seems to. You'd want to be very, very clear in your present level. So if you look just below that best practice, you can see the compliance items around that. So um, for the goal, so must be measurable, must include measurement data, cannot be specific curriculum, followed again by best practice. So that is how this document is organized. Um, this is the first year that we have rolled this out. Like I said, last year it was on a, it was on a grid sheet um, and we got some feedback that it was a little bit difficult to manage. It was a little bit, and there was a lot of words, um, and it was often challenging to translate that information back onto the IEP itself. So if you get a chance to try this, we would love your feedback on it, because again, these resources are not any good if you're not using them or if they're not helpful. We don't want to be, you know, producing information that makes your job harder, your jobs are hard enough. So, um, Take a look at this and let us know what you think. We didn't do every page of the IEP. Obviously, there was no point to do that. We just wanted to show a couple of examples. And I could see that there that um, there was some problems with the link. I'm hopeful that this link is the correct link. And if not, we'll, we'll address that. We'll fix it. These eligibility form documents, the quick reference documents are organized exactly the same way. So this, the red would mean that, um, that compliance piece. And you can see exactly what we're looking for. If we are reviewing an adverse effect eligibility form as part of your cohort, this is, these are the compliance items that we would want to see evident on this document. And we are working, there's the link, and we are going to, we are in the process of updating all of the eligibility forms to include best practice as well. Once those are done, those will be put up on the website as well. Specific learning disability, this eligibility form, same thing. These right now are currently just compliance items. So you can see exactly what you need to do. So for example, part A, qualifying considerations, it's a must fill. You need to check the correct box and you can go through and see exactly what we would look for. We will update this as well um, with best practice in blue so that you'll have that information also. And there's the link for that. And then the speech language eligibility form, the exact same thing, right? Here's all your compliance items. Um, and we will update these to include best practice as well. And when we get those done, we will make sure to, to let you know um, when, when they're updated and on the website. Now, please feel free, directors, please feel free to pull these off and share these with your staff. These are, you have complete and total permission to take these and and disseminate those, use them as training material, um, get those out to your staff. And again, feedback. If you try them and you love them, tell us. If you try them and you hate them, tell us. We wanna know. All right, so information sheets, those are also documented as such on the resource page. And we're gonna go through just a couple of these. And what these are, were um, we took the information from user that was relevant to these specific information sheets and tried to condense it in such a way that it was a little bit easier to manage, right? User, as I mentioned, is so, it's just huge. There's so much information and it can often be hard to find, for example, information about abbreviated day. So we tried to do that for you. So you can see on this slide, the left-hand side, just has that very specific user information. What are those expectations? We've tried to highlight the pieces that you really need to think about. And then on the right-hand side are those, um, we call them one-pagers, that again, just takes that information and, and just breaks it down for you so that again, you can see 
the code on the left-hand side, if it shows up on a corrective activity, you'll know what the code represents. The what in that center column tells you what that code represents. And then the where on that final column tells you exactly where that information is located. Now, these are three separate documents. I just threw them all onto one slide so we could look at them all together. Um, but those are examples of an information sheet for abbreviated day. We also have, um, and we call them fun facts. I, I don't know why I decided to call them fun facts because I suppose people could argue there's nothing fun about abbreviated day info, but that's what we went with. That's the link. Um, and then we also included here the abbreviated day webinar because abbreviated day is something that we have been tasked to take a very close look at. So we want you to have the training webinar. Uh, it's probably an hour-ish long, Jennifer. Does that make, does that sound about right? Maybe 45 minutes-ish? Um, 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. If there's you, a lot if, to it. There's a lot to it, yeah. And if you go on and you you watch that, let us know because you'll get a you'll get a, a contact hour for it. Also, right below that is the the um, abbreviated day PowerPoint that corresponds to that training. So if you don't have time to do the training, believe me, I know how hard it is to go back and watch recordings after the fact. I'm terrible at that. Maybe you just want to download the PowerPoint and use that as a training reference. That's perfectly fine as well. Another information sheet that was created was around the initial evaluation timeline. We get questions around, you know, what are the timelines? What are, you know, that, especially that initial evaluation one. So this again, just takes all of the information specific to initial evaluation, starting from referral to IEP implementation, right out of user, and it puts it in one spot so that it's just a little bit easier to uh, reference. You're not flipping through user because in user it's all spread out. Um, when I was teaching, I would have printed this and posted it some because it just makes it much easier to see. So hopefully this is also helpful. And there's the link for that one. Another information sheet is um, an IEP meeting checklist. We often get questions, you know, what should I, you know, from new teachers, um, what should I think about? I've got an IEP coming up. I don't know what I need to prepare. What should I do before? What what are the pieces I need to worry about? So this was intended to be helpful um, just in, in, in terms of all of those components. What do you want to do before, during, and after? Just to kind of, once again, help keep you organized. And there's the link to that. All right. So academic standards. So um, I, this is not so much a resource as it is um, just a, a, a recognition about standards because we get lots of questions about this. Um, compliance, if we come in and we do look at whether or not goals are stated, cited to standards, compliance is, is there a citation? That's all we look at. We do not in, on any level flip through the standards to say, oh, does this really match or does this make sense? We, we trust you. You guys are excellent at what you do. You know the student, you know the families, you know your teachers. So if you're putting a standard there, we're trusting you. We're gonna, we're gonna see it, it's done good. Best practice, however, would be making sure that each academic goal is cited to grade level standards and for those students, and I, I hate to even say this because I do not want anybody on any level to take this as a blanket statement because you know how, how poorly that tends to work out for all of us, right? But if a student is in an FLS setting, for example, you might potentially, it might potentially for that student make more sense to align those to the alternate academic achievement standards. I'm not saying that that is always the case. You know the student best. Um, so you, you know, again, we are trusting the IEP team to make that determination, but that would most likely be the situation. Okay. Um, so we just wanted to make sure that you had access to those alternate academic achievement standards for those students for whom you think it is appropriate to cite that way. So that is that first link. That second link is the webinar that um, Jody Bazio-Smith who is the coordinator for alt assessments, put on 
um, last year at some point. So we wanted you to have access to that as well. There is one bit of information in that webinar that is incorrect that we uh, realized after the fact, and that is around citing goals to um, the main early learning developmental standards, MELDs. It is not appropriate to cite goals, even for those really lower students who are functioning well below grade level, you would not cite their goals to MELDs. MELDs are intended to be used for students in preschool only. Okay, so you'll hear that in the webinar. That is, that is, um, that has been, that guidance has been updated. Before I move into the professional development schedule, I just threw a ton of info at you, and I want to just pause to see if anybody has any questions or if there was anything that I could go back and clarify, or if anybody had any thoughts about what um, what we've sort of presented so far. Anything in chat, Jennifer, I should pay close attention to? Winning Powerball numbers, anything like that? No, a lot of kudos for um, Carly's awesome quick reference documents. So I will be sure yes. to share that with her. That's and fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, that feedback is really, really helpful. This team has worked really hard on this. So um, I, I, I appreciate that feedback. We'll make sure it gets to the whole team. And once you dig into them, if you have thoughts, like if you're like, you know what, my teachers would really love it if this, we want to know that. Also, if this document works better for you in another format, feel free to tweak it. This is, we just want to put it out there. You, you need to do what you need to do to make it useful for your team. So feel free to do that. Okay. So our professional development schedule, our office hour schedule have, has already been um, determined for the year. However, the, um, the document has an incorrect link on it. I think the document on the website. So the link, if you already downloaded that schedule and the link looks like this, the one that I've circled, that is an incorrect link that will take you to a dead end somewhere. We're trying to get rid of all the dead ends on our website, but that is an ongoing process. So the link below in blue, that is the correct link that will take you to all of our office hour, um, all of our upcoming office hours. So and I, just, I put the correct, the link to the professional development schedule that has the correct link in it, in the chat. And it should also be up on the website within 24 to 48 hours. It has to go through the approval process. So. Perfect. So if you've already downloaded it, go back on in 24 to 48 hours and redo it. Otherwise, you should be fine. Thank you. Okay, so we also have a professional learning page, okay? This is where you will find all of our recorded information. Any, any PD that we have recorded and uploaded is documented here. The challenge with this, and we are currently trying to get this um, organized a little bit differently, um, this is every bit of PD for anybody in our office. And it makes it really difficult for me to say to the field, oh, well, we've got a module on present level, which we do. It's 20 minutes, go in there and find that. Well, there's nothing on here that identifies which are the modules or which is a, a more formal full IEP training, that type of thing. So this will take you right now to the professional learning page that looks like this but we are working to update this in such a way so that we are able to better organize and label everything because we just really want you to access this info. But I know personally, I would never use this document. I think it, it's, it's just really hard to understand what you're looking for. So um, feel free to get in here and dig around. If you've got feedback on how this is organized, we'd love to hear that as well. But we are hopeful that we're going to be able to organize it in such a way so that you will be able to see, here's all of the office hours and they'll be labeled as such. Here are the modules and they'll be labeled as such so that it's just a little bit easier for you to find exactly what you want. Or if we direct you to, oh, you know what, I'd like you to look at abbreviated day, you can find it very, very easily. So these are all recorded and they do have the corresponding PowerPoints as well. 
And I would highly recommend just clicking on the blue bar on category and sorting it by category because that helps a teeny tiny little bit. And if you are, if this uh, organization just doesn't work for you and you just cannot find what, you, what you're what you looking for, email us. We can put our fingers on it pretty quickly. So if you need something, you know, even if you're not even sure if we have it, and you're like, you know what, I really would love to see this, let us know. You know, we've, a lot of this information we've created based on uh, questions from the field. So if you're like, you know, I'd really love to have more information about X, Y, and Z, let us know. We can put something together for you. All right. So this is our PD schedule. Um, today, obviously, we're doing resources, but you can see we are doing the, the second and fourth Wednesday of every month from three to four. Um, and if you go on to that link to the professional development schedule, it will have the registration link for you. And it also has a little blurb so you know exactly what, what that um, training is intended to give you, what that information should be. All of our office hours in this visual are documented in that, that um, peachy color. The statewide trainings are um, in blue. And then on Wednesday, the 23rd, there will be no office hours because I'm hopeful that we will all be sitting on a beach somewhere, you guys especially, doing anything but work. So there will be no office hours on that day. And there's the updated schedule for that. All right. We went through everything much quicker than I thought we might, which is okay. One of the other changes in our office hours is that we are no longer doing Q&A every, I, think, I can't even remember the last Friday of the month, however it was we did it last year, um, because we, we didn't get a lot of response from it. You know, it was, it, we didn't get a lot of interest in it. So what we're going to do with every one of these Wednesday office hours is we'll stay on as long as people have questions or, you know, or if people, you know, I have an IEP, can I grab you after the office hour and just go over this IEP with you? Absolutely. So our Q&A time will now sort of shift to the end of these office hours for those people who want them. Um, so that's a, that's a little bit of a change. So we, um, we also like to say, and the Q&A time would be a great time to come with um, draft goals. You have a form you're filling out. Um, I just want to pick your brain about bring those to us. We want you to do it correctly. We want to help you be able to do it correctly the first time. Nobody wants to have to go back and fix things after the fact. Um, so after all of our office hours, if you have questions, feel free to stay and we will stay on as long as people want us to and just go over whatever it is you need us to go over. With that said, this is a link. There's the link as well as a QR code to our uh, professional learning feedback and our contact hour form. If you fill this out, you will get a contact hour for today. And I've, I've said this many times, I will continue to say it. We take your feedback very, very seriously. A lot of what we do has shifted based on the feedback that we've gotten from the field. So um, please feel free to give us feedback. My only sort of ask would be if you have negative feedback, that's perfectly okay. We want that as well, but make sure that we understand it in such a way that we can respond to it um, and hopefully use it to improve our practice. Um, you know, things like, um, you know, I didn't get a break. I mean, that's very helpful information, but, um, you know, just make sure that we understand the negative feedback in such a way so that we can work to fix it, okay? Um, so we'll leave that there for just a quick sec. You can take a picture or go directly to the link. But I think, I think we're done. That link is in the chat box. So link is in the chat box. Look at this. See, I told you my team, we're, they're, we're small but mighty. They're awesome. Okay. And there we go. All right. Let me go forward to... Oh, questions, but I wanted to put this one up because it's our contact info. Yeah, this is our contact information. We work really hard to maintain a pretty tight 24 hour turnaround time in, in regards to responding to questions and all of that. Um, and if for some reason you reach out to one of us and we're not available, feel free to reach out to the next person. That is perfectly fine. Feel free to include us all and one of us will get back to you. 
Um, and again, feel free to use this, our contact information. If you've got, again, draft IEPs, um, I've got a goal. I can't quite figure this goal out. Is this present level okay? Can you take a look at that? Um, and we are happy to do that. What we would ask, again, as I mentioned, we are in um, we are in cohort for the feds. And part of our responsibilities include um, requesting correction for any errors that we see, okay? So if you send me a full IEP and you only want me to look at present level for goal one, two, and three, and I see the whole IEP and there are errors on the IEP, now I have to, I am mandated to say to you, I saw this and you have to correct it, okay? We don't want to do that. You're, like I said, you're already working hard enough. We don't want to put more. So if you have questions, for example, about present level, shoot us an email, no identifying information, and just say, here's a couple examples of present level I'm thinking about. What do you think? And we'll give you feedback on that before you plug it into the IEP. Please feel free to use that for eligibility forms, for um, you know, just whatever information you're generating, let us know, and we're happy to give you feedback on that. But just keep it very hypothetical and very generic. Um, so office hour, this isn't in the feedback form, so, um, hold on to the link and I will check in with Carly and try again tomorrow is what I'm going to say. And that link is on the, um, PowerPoint, which I will stick in the chat once again. So everybody has it. Yeah, and if for some reason you can't do it, reach out to one of us. We'll we'll make sure you get your contact out. Okay. Does Sorry anybody... about that. The first one always has some kinks in there. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else that we can do for you? Does anybody have any questions? Or was there anything that you wanted us to go back and look at again? Or um, anything? No, quiet group. All right. Well, thank you so much. I'm so hopeful that everybody's school year has started out as smoothly as possible. Um, let us know what you need. We're here to support you. We are your team. We are on your team. We are not, you know, um, here to ding you or any of that. We're, we're here to support you. So please let us know what you need. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. We appreciate you all so much. Take care.